Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Well, we're keeping a close eye on radar, expecting things to start heating up. And as that happens, we'll be tracking storms today and tomorrow. Plus, he was charged with sexually assaulting and killing his baby daughter. And now the case against this Inkster father has been thrown out. But first, a man and his wife are killed after their home blows up in Orion Township. When crews arrived to the scene there, they were met by 50 foot flames coming from that home. Fortunately, the couple's 29 year old daughter was able to make it out of that house safely and is expected to be OK. Local 4 Sean Lay joining us live now this afternoon and Sean, there's a lot of mystery about what caused this home to explode in the first place. Do we know yet? So let's unravel the mystery for everyone at home. There is so much going on here, Everod. First and foremost, hearts breaking all over this Orient Township community for the husband and wife that lost their lives here. You can see investigators here behind me and walk this way. I'll take you a little closer to the home that this couple essentially built themselves. And you can see that there's nothing left. As investigators now, they start the painstaking work of start to dig down deep here to find out why exactly this home exploded. Investigators from the Oakland County Sheriff's Office are just getting started using 3D imaging of the home to get a look at what it looked like before last night's blast and examining the debris field for clues. How far that debris was sent and what condition it is in are all clues to investigators to help them find out why a home with no natural gas hookup would explode. Last night, dangerous and stressful work for rescue crews. The home exploded around 8.30 in the evening. 57-year-old Kathy Dominguez and her 65-year-old husband Bruce were inside the home along with their 29-year-old daughter. The couple screaming for their daughter to get out of the home. She was able to run to safety, but the resulting fire was too much for her parents. There was a big boom and uh, the daughter told me she actually thought a tree fell on the house and then she heard her dad saying get out. Uh, I'm trapped but get out and so she ran out and um, uh, the neighbor, I guess the neighbor at that time come over and helped her the rest of the way out. Back here live in Orion Township, just looking at this, your heart breaks still smoldering here. They're still checking for hot spots. And again, this investigation truly just now getting underway. Now back over my shoulder here, a couple of hundred yards away from the house is the propane tank that powered the hot water heater and the stove. It was turned off. That's a clue. Investigators want to know why it was turned off and who turned it off. Everett, another clue here. They just discovered this when you look up. There's a couple of surveillance cameras here, but they're not sure if all that equipment to run the surveillance camera was in the house. So they're going to check and see if there's any video of this that may be helpful to them as well. Back to you. Uh, a lot of questions surrounding all of this, Sean. I understand that the couple has other adult children. Do we know where they were and uh, what are they saying about this incident? So yeah, one is out of state, one is out of the country. Both are rushing back here now with the news that they that both have lost their parents. Wow, very, very sad. You certainly feel for that family. Uh, I'm thankful that at least one daughter was able to make it out OK. Sean, thank you. Turning our attention to the forecast now, temperatures are warming up into the 80s this afternoon, Brandon. There's also a chance for severe storms as we round out the week on this Friday Eve. Yeah, both Thursday or Friday Eve and Friday, we have those storm chances and we're flirting with 80 in a lot of spots, even seeing 80 degrees in Ann Arbor, 82 in Adrian out west. It's a little bit thinner cloud cover and that helps certainly 76 degrees in Pontiac 79 at Metro only 72 in Mount Clemens. They've had some rain through parts of Macomb County, keeping temperatures down and getting the sun. Not necessarily a great thing, a little fuel to storm potential, but 79 now on our way to about 84 degrees. The humidity is up. The winds are going to be cranking warm, muggy, gusty. Don't overdo it out there. Make sure we're drinking lots of water and mainly between between 2 and 6 p.m. watching for the storm chances. Marginal risk of severe weather. I-69 and south through the afternoon hours. You can see clouds are starting to move from west to east and thinning out west. Uh, a couple of showers still lingering up in Port Huron over in Algonac and southern Ontario. But again, it's the heat, humidity, the fuel that we need to watch today. And we'll have more on tomorrow's storm chances as well coming up. Alrighty, Brandon, thank you. 
Now to new information in the case against a man charged with the murder and sexual assault of an eight month old girl in Inkster. That case has since been dismissed. This is 22 year old James Lee Salt Marshall. He was charged with murder, child abuse and criminal sexual conduct in connection to the death of his infant daughter who died at an Inkster hotel back in April. The case against him was thrown out today after the medical examiner in Wayne County determined that child's death was an accident. And a 22 year old woman is OK after she was shot in the hand. This is on Detroit's west side. Police say the woman was driving a rented U-Haul truck around 2:30 this morning on Penrod Street when two masked men with rifles approached her vehicle. The woman sped off but was shot in the hand as she was driving away. She was taken to the hospital and is listed in stable condition. Those two suspects are still on the loose. And over to Macomb County now, a man there will be spending the rest of his life in prison after he was found guilty in the murder of his own father. This is 55 year old Gregory Neiman. He was found guilty of first degree premeditated murder back in May for strangling his 89 year old father to death. Today, Neiman was in court for his sentencing where he actually had to be escorted out of the courtroom after blowing up at the judge while proclaiming his in innocence. Watch this. I could never do anything to, as it states to hurt my father. I love my father and everything that's said about me that I, I did this murder. That is a bold faced lie. I'll take a polygraph, fill this whole courtroom with judges as yourself and then have these guys take a polygraph. We'll see who's lying. He's pretty adamant there looking directly into the camera. Neighbors say that Neiman was abusive to his father in the past and that police had previously been to the home before that murder. His sentence comes without the possibility of parole, but there you see him carrying on again in the courtroom and having to be escorted out by sheriff's deputies. The mother accused of setting her car on fire with her 11 year old son trapped inside has been charged. 48 year old Sherry Richter was charged with assault with intent to murder and arson. The judge set bond at $100,000 cash. The incident happened at the Roseland Memorial Park Cemetery in LaSalle Township. Police are saying that the mother tied her son up in the car and then set the trunk on fire. The boy struggled to get free and eventually the mother did let him out and he was not seriously hurt. But again, she is definitely in a bit of trouble there. Two final bids have been submitted by contractors competing to be chosen to finish the Wayne County Jail project. One is from Walsh Construction, which is offering two jail options at the current site on Gratiot Avenue, while the second bid is a $520 million offer from Rock Ventures owned by Dan Gilbert. Rock Ventures is hoping to move the jail site to a new location near the I-75 service drive and build a new criminal justice center. Gilbert's Rock Ventures would then get the Gratiot Avenue site with plans to build a mixed use development that would include, as we've talked about before, a major league soccer stadium. A final decision expected next month sometime in late July. A revised version of President Trump's travel ban goes into effect today. The new guidelines will require people in six countries to prove a relationship with family already in the U.S. And if they can't prove they're meeting a spouse, parent, child, or a sibling in the U.S., they'll be temporarily banned. The ban will be 90 days if the person is from Libya, Syria, Iran, Somalia, Yemen, or Sudan, and it'll be 120 days if they are a refugee from any country. The Supreme Court has granted full review of the travel ban with oral arguments set for October. All right, still ahead here on Local 4 News at noon. Hundreds of passengers have been stranded at a Boston airport for days. We'll tell you what's keeping them grounded and when they can finally get to their destination. Plus a massive explosion at a Kentucky dormitory. What crews say caused that blast that gutted most of the building. But first, we're learning more about Pope Francis's top financial advisor that's now facing multiple sex crimes. That's coming up next. Our client. All right, welcome back everyone. The top financial advisor for Pope Francis has been charged with sex crimes. Cardinal George Pell is the highest ranking Vatican official to ever be charged with abuse. This morning, Pope Francis said Pell was charged for decades old actions. Meanwhile, Pell claims that he did nothing wrong. I'm looking forward finally to having my day in court. The whole idea of sexual abuse is abhorrent to me. We should let you know this is the second time that Pell has faced accusations relation, in relation to sexual abuse. Last year, he admitted to mishandling sexual abuse claims in Australia. He'll be in court on the new charges in July. 
One person is in the hospital this afternoon after a dorm explosion at a Kentucky college. The explosion happening around 5 p.m. yesterday when inside of a dorm at Murray State University. Emergency officials there saying they believe that a gas leak is what caused it. Along with the de deconstruction or the destruction of the dorm, several nearby buildings were also damaged. A recent graduate was inside the building at the time of the explosion, but thankfully he's expected to be OK. Well, hundreds of passengers have been stranded at a Boston airport for days, and believe it or not, there's still no end in sight. These passengers for Azores and Sada Airlines were supposed to fly out to Portugal Sunday night, but day after day after day, their flights are being canceled. The airline officials saying that a series of technical issues are what have caused two planes to be grounded, but many of the passengers are getting fed up with all the excuses. This is my third day here waiting for a flight. Third day. Each day, they tell you to come back the next day. They don't tell you the time. They don't tell you anything else. And as you can imagine, that could be pretty frustrating. The airline has been paying for hotels for the passengers, but they still haven't given a definite answer as to when those passengers will be able to leave. In the latest update, they said that they hope to have a flight ready to go by tomorrow night. New at noon. Multiple tornadoes hit parts of the Midwest with video capturing the moment when one of the funnel clouds forms near a small town. Brandon? Discussion doesn't call for any real concern for tornadoes for us, but we have severe threats today and tomorrow and more rain on the way. If you like the summer heat and humidity, you better like the storms that come with it. We've got you covered next. I look marvelous in these. Designer sunglasses that cost big bucks or those that you can buy at the local gas station for $10. Which do better to protect your eyes? You may be surprised to see what the experts have to say. They can say that they protect from UV light, but they don't need to tell you how, how much. Tonight at 11. Hit the road this all right, welcome back everybody. Check out this crazy video from Iowa where a series of funnel clouds touched down just yesterday afternoon. This was just one of many tornadoes that were spotted across the state. And along with them, baseball sized hail was also reported causing damage to multiple cars and homes. Fortunately there, nobody was hurt. But taking a look at that video, Brandon, I mean, it almost looks like that movie Twister. Remember that from back in like the late 90s, I want to say. I don't remember what year it was. Mid to late yes. 90s. 96, our, our producer Chris Page says. Okay. That's yeah. close. Absolutely remember that and uh, how far we have come. And that is a big reason why very few injuries a lot of times with these. Yeah. The big risk is always the overnight showers and storms when nobody's paying attention. But we have chances here today and tomorrow for severe weather. I think tomorrow a little bit better chance. And, you know, it's Thursday. What does that mean? Afternoon baseball at Comerica Park and a chance for you know, delay. But the, the beauty of these afternoon games is even if we get some showers and storms, certainly concerned about the crowds out there, but they'll have time to wait it out and get her done. 79 degrees right now. Humidity is climbing. Dew points are in the middle 60s, which is very warm and muggy. Uh, getting into the upper 60s to near 70 degrees for dew points is tropical and heat and humidity combined not necessarily going to be a friend of ours. Southwest winds 17 gusting 20 to 30 and through the afternoon these 10 to 25 mile an hour winds could be gusting 30 to 40 without the presence of showers and storms. Just plain old gusty winds 84 degrees and Best storm chances between 2 and 6 p.m. today with the heat of the afternoon. Tonight overnight, 70 degrees, so staying warm and muggy. Not real comfy sleeping weather. Do all you can to stay on the cool side. Spotty showers, especially as we head into uh, early tomorrow, maybe 4 or 5 a.m. Anybody planning on doing any boating today and heading to the beach, especially up in Huron County, way up north, there is uh, advisories out or there are advisories out for rip currents and problems uh, in Port Austin, Caseville, places like that. But meantime, the big lakes, two plus foot waves from some of these gusty winds and small craft advisories.
The Storm Prediction Center, Norman, Oklahoma, has us under the marginal risk for severe weather, I-69 south, and that's a weak risk. So maybe just a very small handful of showers and storms capable of producing gusty winds. But you can see the skies are trying to clear out. As we head into tomorrow, the stationary front will drape over us and give us a couple of opportunities. And again, we've increased the chances tomorrow to slight just a little bit higher. Here is the computer model 3:30 this afternoon. There are some of those showers early on Friday. We're seeing another round of what could be some heavy rain and watch this boom 4 p.m. on Friday could be super soakers, damaging wind, dangerous lightning and hail. So tomorrow's a little bit better for more numerous and stronger showers, but still warm and muggy and breezy tomorrow. Saturday, some spotty showers, but no washout. Either way, Everett, I think Sunday's the better of the two weekend days and a little touch and go Monday through Wednesday. But again, doesn't look like any holiday washouts. Alrighty, and that is the good news, Brandon. Thank you. For parents, keeping your family safe, that is the top priority. But today, Help Me Hank shows us how to be ready for whenever trouble hits. We all know living here in Metro Detroit, the weather is unpredictable, but let's face it, life is unpredictable. Whether it's a tornado, flooding, or an emergency in your home, it is always better to be prepared. The experts revealing what you need to do to stay safe. What should you have in an emergency kit? If you were gonna be out of your house for 24 hours, what are the things you would need to do to stay safe, secure, and as comfortable as possible. Well, there are the obvious items like bottled water, non-perishable foods, flashlights, and first aid products. Those should all be kept together in one safe place. But there are the everyday necessities you may forget, like your prescription medication, chargers for your iPhones, both the cords and the portable chargers. And don't forget, a plan for your family. I think it's important to have an evacuation plan. So if you did need to leave the house, how's everybody getting out? What are the routes to get out? And then where are you going to meet? It is also important to appoint a person that's outside of the area as an emergency contact. Everyone in your family should know their number by heart. That way, if you get separated, you can all call him or her. And finally, do some inventory of the items in your home. Take photos of your valuables. Some time spent in advance to put the inventory together, and then if something does happen, you'll be in a much better place to help the restoration process begin. And we have more tips and information to keep yourself and your family members prepared in the event of an emergency situation. You'll find all that information on the consumer page of our website. Click on Detroit.com. I'm Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank. All righty, Hank, thank you. The annual Stars and Stripes officially kicks off today for the first time at its new location. And this year, the festival will be held at the Suburban Collection Showplace in Novi. The summer event had been held in Macomb County for the past 10 years at Freedom Hill. This year's festival starts today and it runs until July 2nd. All right, still ahead, some traffic on a major freeway in Texas shuts it down for hours, in fact, this morning. And it's all because of some very quick pigs. We're going to show you the rest of this video and have the story behind it when we come right back. 100 points.